What's going on, Paisanos? V here, coming at you with another Marker Watch today. Before I begin, I just want to say, guys, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe button, and comment down below. And if you have any questions, type in hashtag q for v and I'll answer at the end of my next Marker Watch. Guys, the market is keeps evolving, keeps changing. Um, the other day, I went to a, a card shop, um, T uh, TTD. It's in, I believe, Louisville, Lexington. I actually honestly forgot. Uh, and I was talking with the owner. We was talking about how the Yu-Gi-Oh market and the Magic the Gathering market are vastly different. Whereas in the Magic the Gathering market, they have cards that have a little bit more better sustainability in their in their value. And whereas the Yu-Gi-Oh market, it's not happening. By the way, that was a great card shop I went to. If you guys didn't want to go to TTD, check it out. It's an awesome card shop. Uh, but anyway, going back into it, the market in Yu-Gi-Oh is very different. In which card prices can go from a dollar, a nickel, five dollars twenty dollars thirty dollars and sometimes stay at that price point and sometimes drop down from 30 back to a dollar that fast it has to do because sets have there's other games with sets that rotate whereas the Yu -Gi -Oh market is more of a uh, we get a balance and i'll set and our game keeps going that's it and it's something that's very unique within this game i think that which which besides making this, the fact that this game successful is a unique setup as opposed to games like pokemon and magic where they have rotations within their sets rotations for Yu-Gi-Oh would be pretty hard to do i mean i'm not saying it's impossible but it'd be a bit of a pain to do and i kind of like this and if you guys think you you know you like this whole set with the banners do me a favor guys comment down below and say how lucky we are the fact that we don't have to keep buying i mean we still buy new cards but you don't you're not forced to keep buying cards and we see players that play older decks still top it's actually something really awesome about this game that i love a lot and i would love to know what you guys think about that but uh, for those who still have tricksters who've had the deck for, let's see, since Coda Duelist, the values are, are increasing because tricksters are being used in Orcus. But then again, tricksters are still a viable deck, being the fact that they haven't been hit by the ban list. And looking at trickster light stage, it's almost there five dollars for the original print from Coda Duelist. Looking at the 2018 Make 10 version, that's also near five dollars. And then you got trickster light stage, the common from Star Pack Reigns, that's about four dollars. And there's something that has to be said about Star Pack Reigns because. There's some value in this set that's just random. From, from a star pack that, for the most part, when it first came out, was just dead on arrival, there's something kind of cool about this star pack in which there's sporadic value on some of these cards. And they might change, and they might go up and go down, and I don't know, something weird about that. Like, Dot Scraper used to be a money card, now it's back down like $2. Um, look at the other cards like Draco Net Starfoil, this is worth nothing. And now we're sitting here at $9. Then you got cards like Phoenix Chain, came on Astro Pack 8, the Ultimate Rare version, the market price of this card roughly around $11, and yet somehow this card is handling uh, Unlimited at about $18, and it's not there for long because after these two are gone, it's about $24 for Phoenix Chain. I don't know why either, guys, I just don't know why this price is high, but I do know the fact that this this might have to go with something that I've been talking about over the past couple of days. When you buy into an older set, that older set easily cannot be replaced in the market. And those holding those cards, well, they're not putting those cards back into the market, we're going to see these cards maintain a high price point, where really, really, in reality, they shouldn't. And looking at Phoenix Chain, it's done nothing in the meta, it has nothing to do with the any, anything at all, but the price point is still high because those players who are holding OT Phoenix Chains are just not getting rid of them. And those who keep buying into it are only going to keep putting its price point higher. And we're seeing this guy over here start listing a lower, um, it only, you know, we really have to see what happens as far as, <sighs> oh, excuse me, the, the, as far as the price point of Phoenix Chain. Then you have cards like Super Team Buddy Force Unite. I love this card. One, because I love the artwork. Two, because I love the dramas. And three, it's because it's only a solo print seeker rare. It came out in Flames of Destruction, which in my opinion is starting to look a little bit like Star Trek Blast, except it's a faster version of Star Trek Blast, and which we just see nothing but value all over the set of Flames of Destruction. Uh, with that said though, Super Team Buddy Force Unite never really picked up. The market price of this card is always around a dollar, and we're singing here around a dollar. Unlimited versions are 88 cents. First editions, 99 like 99 cents is nothing i'm not sure this card's gonna see play to be honest with you i just love this card i love that it's a solo print and i really do hope konami does never print, like reprints super team buddy force unite i hope they don't even touch it and if they don't touch it oh man i don't know should i buy nine of these are you gonna buy these is anyone else gonna go to r9 super team buddy force unite with me because i i can't be the only one looking at this card going 
I want it. I don't know why. The artwork says to buy it. That's it. That's all I care about. <laughs> um, next, guys, Battles of Legends Relentless Revenge. Now, to my fellow card shop owners out there, a couple of distributors have a very small quantity of Battles of Legends Relentless Revenge. I actually got a couple of boxes from my shop, so I guarantee you, if you're a store owner right now, you might want to go and talk to your distributors and see if you can pick these up, depending which ones you have. Once again, it's a very small limited amount. It might be gone already, but it doesn't hurt to, to, uh, to ask. And for Yu-Gi-Oh players, well, Yu-Gi-Oh players are going to want to buy this set all day long. It's a phenomenal set. Set. You got Cardex Cyber Emergency, which is about $24. You got Tricks of Reincarnation, which is handling at $10. It just floats all over the place. When it first came out, it was $6. You got number 75 Bamboozling, which some ungodly reason is still $8. The card's doing nothing. It did spike to high in 75 at one at one time. Ooh, that was a crazy time. Um, then you got Cards of Game Seal, Secret Rare. That's always been valued. And we're going to get almost there $9. Number 27, nine, Dread Not Dreadnoid, $20, uh, $8. I'm sorry, 20, uh, number 20, yeah, $8 for this card. Um, is there any print other printing? No, just one printing for my, um, any player wants to play this card. Then you got cards that go to Castle of Schomburg that will never see play, but somehow still holds value. Dark Worm, Secret Rares for my Pendulum players. This is a lot of great value. Oh, also, the Orcus stuff, the, the back row stuff, uh, 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 Fan Knight Fogblade, and two Orcus monsters, they all come in this set Secret Rare, don't they? You got cards like Dragon Knight Diagram, which is cooled down a little bit to $5. It was getting pretty high. There's your Silent Boots, Neos. Aquadoff and Ultra Rares, this set is just filled with value. So, yeah, like I was saying earlier, if you're a store owner, you might want to get some Battles Legends for Legends Revenge. You your players really want to buy from this set because they want to pull cards from varying decks from this set. And looking at the original Battles Legends, it was kind of like that when that first came out. And it was out for a little bit before this one dropped. And I'm only, I can only assume the next Battles Legends set is going to have the same kind of uh, uh, hype within the market and value within the market if they continue this formula. Then we have cards like Vampire Sucker. Now, this is a weird one. This card went as high as like $24, almost at $25 on certain sites. Uh, Vampire Sucker's market price is about almost at $20, you can see over here. But when we look over here, guys, it's actually about $17 for Vampire Sucker. And I don't know why it's going went down a little bit of value. But does it really matter? Is it because those holding Vampire Sucker are, are, are afraid to, to see it get reprinted? In Vows of Legends or the Megaton, it could be a good indication. It did come out around Flames of Destruction, which desperately needs uh, a reprint, which I think would be answered once again in Vows of Legends or the Megatons. But I, I think it's the fear that's dropping these in value. It's kind of weird. Then you got other cards like Red Reboot, another card that desperately needs a reprint. Uh, and this is another reason why I think that uh, Flames of Destruction is going to get hit hard with the reprints, because Red Reboot uh, is, is a card that a lot of you players will, will desperately need, and it was a super rare, but it's hitting almost near $5 for this card. It's about, roughly around 4 right now. And uh, yeah, you need three of them if you're going to play the card, by the way. And I don't know, it's a weird card. By the way, a little fun, little, little side note. For those looking to play Red Reboot against Mystic Mime, I'm not a big fan of that, and here's why. If they have Mystic Mime already on board, and you have Red Reboot in hand, why would you play Red Reboot? You're paying half your life points in a deck that burns you. <laughs> Listen, I think Red Reboot is a phenomenal card. And I think it's great against decks like Guru Control and Ultra Guys. I really do. But looking at Red Reboot, yeah, I'm not too keen on playing this card against a burn deck that if it already has a Mystic Mime on, burn, uh, on board, I'm doing nothing. And by the way, the deck can easily draw on the Mystic Mime. What, well, with cards like Pot of Extravagance, Pot of Duality, some, cards are running, some decks are running the, uh, the card of the Mist in certain builds I saw. I don't know, I just think that Ray Reboot is not a bad card, but this is definitely not the card you want to put in against Mystic Mime. I'd rather have Unending Nightmare, which would do way more work against that deck. Yes, it is a burn, it's a burn uh, a trap, but it burns the things you want to get rid of, like Mystic Mime, so you can work on OTK. Comment down below, let me know if I'm the only one in this, or would you play Red Reboot against Mystic Mime Burn? Then you got cards like Insector Hornet. Now, once, everyone's forgetting about the ban list. This is the time of Yu-Gi-Oh! where everyone's like, ban list? I don't got time for bans. I got regions coming up, gotta get ready for my locals, gotta make my own entire deck for this meta, and not to mention the fact that I got a YCS coming up. Oh yeah, and Nationals? Gotta play in that too. And then after that, we got World Celebration. So I got a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! to do. So nobody's really focused on the ban list. Nobody's focused on cards like Insector Hornet, which can only came out in Order of Chaos. And to be honest with you, I felt like if Insectors came off the ban list full power, they really wouldn't do nothing in the meta. But with that said, Insect the Hornet, if it wasn't come off the ban list, can we just have a, a, the common agreement that it would be worth an insane amount just in the hype alone? I mean, look at the market price of this card. $3.65 for Insect the Hornet. Then we go to Lightning Play Unlimited, it's under $2. First, Insect the Hornets, $3.50. That's it. 
This car is roughly around five dollars around the last balance and it's starting to cool back down. Guys, keep an eye on this card because I really do think this car will inevitably come off the balance. And then when it does, people want to buy this one. Even a Dragonfly, a one to three, people will still focus on Hornet because that's the money card. I mean, it, you got other insect the cards. You got Super Red Seven Piece, which might go up in value. You got Ultic, like Calibers, as you can see over here. Gigamantis. Uh, you got all these cards, but realistically, I think Hornet's the real one behind all the setup. Then you got Archlord Christia. You know, that card that um you don't have Secret Rare. You definitely don't have Secret Rare. You might have Secret Rare, but it'll be unlimited like I have Secret Rare Unlimited. But first is Archlord Christia, you know you don't got that. Come on, man. That card is so hard to find. And so long as they have it, it has to be fake. You can't it's it's it doesn't exist. It's a unicorn. You don't have a unicorn, bro. You have a horse with something on its head that I can't really mention here on YouTube. My price of this card is currently $24. And then we go over here to page one and look for a near mint unlimited. That bad boy's rocking at 24. And you're like, okay, V, no big deal. Find me a first edition. What is it, 35? I don't care. Well, let's look. Money played, uh, heavily played. As far as anything else, well, lightly played. And the near mint first edition is around $200 for Arsenal Christie. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm not sure what you're doing, guys. But if you're out there and you get and you have any Arsenal Christian first editions, can you start listing them online? Because this card is, is I, I mean, once again, guys, there's other versions you could buy. You can get the super version of Arsenal Christian. It came in multiple printings, both in the 2011 Collector's 10, as well as Destiny Soldiers. It came out as a common instruction deck, so there's a ton of them around. But if you want the Gooch one, Stars Overdrive first edition, like how can Konami beat this? They need to make either an Ulti Arsenal Christian. Or they need to make a um, Prismatic Secret Archer Christia. Now that with the Mega Tins, we can start talking about Prismatic Secret more, a little more open than we could before. That's the only two versions that can even compete. And I'm not sure if we'll beat it, but we'll at least compete against Secret First Edition Archer Christia. Then we have this card, Seal of Wickedness. First of all, without looking at, without reading what it does, do you know what this card does? Because if you do, you have a great memory. Originally came out on Star Wars Overdrive, only printing once during each of your opponent's stamina phase. Select one face of card on the field. During this turn, the effect of the selected card is negated. The control of this card has to pay 500 life points during each of your stamina phase or destroy this card. I don't know if this is a bad card or I don't know if we relate to the party on a card that could have been meta, but I kind of like this card. Call me crazy, but I think this card's really good. Now, we're in a weird meta in which everyone's going off first turn or everyone's trying to control the board for first turn. So I'm not sure if this card would fit into this meta, to be honest with you, stone cold honest. But I think this is a good card. I think this card can definitely show viability in future metas that nobody really knows about at the moment. You know, the unknown unknowns. Things we don't know, we don't know. Well, look at the card. The market price of those cards is about 30 cents. Unlimited are about like 9 cents, but you want a first edition, don't you? Well, first editions are going to be coming in roughly around 26 uh, to 29 cents for this card. I don't know, it's not a bad card. Once again, only printing Starters Overdrive. Kind of looks cool. I kind of like the artwork as well. Uh, moving forward, guys, spell books. Now, I'm not going to go into all the spell books. By the way, yes, they're all high in value. Yes, they're, 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 they're still going to be high in value for a long time. And no, I have no idea why they're still high in value. And we can only use the argument because nobody can replenish the value, even though people should be able to sell their spell book stuff. But look at that card like Spellbook of Fate, both versions are relatively high. Spell of Faith from Abyss Rising, name in first editions, is $19.50. Almost near $20, higher than its $13 market price. And you would go, that's pretty crazy, V. You want to hear what else is pretty crazy? Guy who asks a lot of questions. Spell of Faith Abyss Rising, Ultimate Rare, has a market price of $16. But when we look at it, Unlimited, Lightly Played, Ultis are $22s. First editions are $22s as well, $22.50. And then we take that 2250 and you compare it to the first edition of the Ultra Rare. Basically, what I'm trying to show you guys is for $3 more, you can buy Ulti First Edition Spellbook of Fate as opposed to the name and first edition version of Spellbook of Fate. This is why I don't believe in this card being a high value. I don't believe that it's hype because the value of the Ulti and the original print is so close together, this close together, it's hard to say to yourself, yeah, this is a good buyout. It's really not. Uh, unless all this is clean off the market, and even then I won't trust it because now I made a video about it and so I might have done it already because of the video. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a big fan of Spellbook of Fate or Spellbook in general being at that high in value. And I want to know what you guys think. Do you have the Spellbook stuff? Are you selling it? I've sold almost everything in my Spellbook stuff. I sold my one deck because I love the deck a lot, but I sold everything in Spellbooks. And it could be because a Spellbook of 
uh, judgment and how you get players and back in the mind are actually thinking about that towards the banners, even though they're not thinking about it, it's like the Hornet. And then we look at some of the judgment. The Megaton versions are about four dollars, and then Lord Taki and Galaxy versions, which has a four dollar market price for the secret rare original versions, on limited is being almost near seven dollars. Light you play first editions, well, they're almost near eight to nine dollars. I mean, maybe you can place a focus on public judgment. By the way, all this everyone talking about public judgment, I don't want to be that guy because I hate being that guy. First, talk about public judgment. Oh, oh, V, V, thank you. I'll give myself a little pad in the back for that one. Um, no, I just, I just love, I just love this deck, and I really want to see his card see play. And I think every the whole Yu-Gi-Oh, all Yu-Gi-Oh players out there want to see Spellbook of Judgment come back. Ben Jalk and the Spiritualist give us back Spellbook of Judgment so we can play a tier two deck and just lose that locals, but have a good time doing it. That's what the Spellbooks is, by the way. If you think, oh, I'll, I'll be good with Spellbooks, or hey, V, stop it, I've topped with Spellbooks, then you must have played in Nebraska because anywhere else you went up top with Spellbooks. You bring Spellbooks to like Cali, not only would they laugh at you. They would choose a scrub amongst their community, and he would 2 0 you with like Cloudians. It's just not even fun, not even fair and fun. By the way, someone gets really, people get really upset when I make fun of Nebraska. Well, how about you fix your metagame? <laughs> like, I'm sorry to, to everyone out there that are Nebraska players or our areas. Hey, bro, I live in Kentucky. We don't have the most competitive year players, but we do have some pretty, you know, world's players here. But what I'm trying to say is the metas are very vastly different. And when you get areas like New York, where like you your players go to locals nonstop and play meta, and that's all they know, play places like California, Houston, Texas, Texas in general, California, uh, Florida, those kind of hard hard meta places, like uh, Toronto, uh, which is not part of America, but I'll just include them in there. These hardcore metas, they bust their hump so hard. And then we hear about a random jank deck topping a Yu-Gi-Oh event in like Nebraska. And, and, and then you gotta not expect me, who's a big meta fan, not to go, come on, man. That is that easy? All right. I'm, I'm gonna go to Nebraska with no cards. I'll just, I'll just buy a deck at Regals, and I have a chance of topping because the meta is that dank? Come on, man. Like... <laughs> if you guys are not from Nebraska, you already agree with me. If you guys are from Nebraska, I just want to know, do you agree with me? Is your meta and locals easy? Have you looked everywhere else besides Nebraska and seen it? Like, you could be the best PB football player, sure. You play in the NFL, you're going to get savage. It's not even going to be fair. That's what I'm trying to say when I talk about Nebraska. I, I, I'll visit the state one day, you know. I'll see your world's largest frying pan or something. Uh, Marvel Abyss Kyle's Ultimate Rare. Um, it's not a card that's just going high in value. Abyss Rising, Abyss Rising versus Marvel Abyss Kyle's is almost around $5. Uh, Name it on limits about $9 already. Then you got Marvel Abyss Rising Ultimate Rare, seven fifty market price. It ain't that. It ain't seven fifty. It's going high in value. It's about $14. You can buy a limited light. You played for a penny short. want to save that penny, guys. Now, it's because of new war support. I guess you your players are really getting excited. Or maybe you get getting applied excited because Mermo's got a link monster to the five Mermo players that still play besides me because I'm number six um, that love Mermo's. Um, this is kind of cool, but I'm not sure Mermo's are still the deck. Once again, I will always say this. I think every beginning, every meta, where everyone's figuring out what deck they want to play or understanding what the meta is, Mermo's is a phenomenal shotgun deck in which if you leave a field that's not strong enough, Mermo's will go, cool, boom, and they'll take you out that fast. The deck's good like that. That's what the deck does. The deck cannot play really well against established boards, but if you go set one pass against any Mermel player who's even average, they will smoke you so badly. It's insane. So that's why I like this deck. That's why I always like Mermos, because it makes Yu-Gi-Oh players, it makes the Yu-Gi-Oh meta uh, a focus more on being well established. Because if you're uncertain about what deck you're playing going to Yu-Gi-Oh regionals, Mermos is a deck you definitely do not want to play against. Moving forward, guys, Elemental Hero Needles Knight. I think I'm making a, I've mentioned an Elemental Hero on every one of my videos, and the reason why is one, because I'm getting excited about Elemental Heroes again. Because I wanna I wanna build competitive E heroes. I really do. And I can't be the only one out there. I got guys in my locals saying the same thing. I got guys in my shop, my customers are telling me they're excited about building Elemental Heroes. And I don't know, something about I'm slowly trying to build E heroes, but competitive E heroes. Um, because I don't have enough casuals in my shop, realistically. I would love to. Or maybe because I want to play heroes and speed duels. And Konami needs to release them already. Guys, are you if you're out there, do you have heroes? Are you looking to play heroes? Let me know if I'm alone in this. I I, I just feel like I'm not though. Now I'm not gonna play Elemental Hero Neo Snipe, but I will note for everyone who is out there that has this card, you have money. And a card that nobody's really caring about. Come on, stream victory. Actually, not that I don't think that's not that long ago for as far as heroes. Not I mean you guys said this pretty long ago. But um, in the long spectrum of heroes, this this card's relatively young. Well, the, the market price of Elemental Hero Neos Knight Ultra Rare is about $10. And then we're seeing over here, Light You Play First Edition, almost near $18. Then you got Elemental Hero Neos Knight, uh, the Ultimate Rare, $9 market price. And then the card's about $19 to $21. 
he, sure, heroes. I, comment down below if you know why, or if you have this card, sell it. It's just not worth it. Unless you're a collector, then you guys are just doing your thing. Maybe that's why hero, hero cards are going to be value. Because the collectors move into the GX market, and one of the first things they want to get is the hero cards. And in that essence, it would kind of make sense. Then you got cards like Gladiator Taming. Another card called Extreme Victory, Secret Rare, and it's doing nothing. Solo printing, by the way. $2 market price, name it first edition, bam, $1. So, if you want to get this card, you can. Now, I don't know if Gladys is going to be doing anything. Gladys have sporadically gotten support throughout the years, but I think we're missing a Gladiator Link monster. And I kind of want to play Gladiators again. I want Konami to go, you know what, let's take a GX era deck, give it some new support, and boom, we have a new card in the meta where we used to Odin and new. I kind of want that to happen, guys, and I, I, I really like when Konami does that. We have a well-established meta, and Konami goes, yeah, just grab one of those old meta decks and make it a tier 1 deck. Not, not once again, not too busted, but good enough to play against the big dogs in the tier 1 slots. And I really want it to be Gladius. We're looking at Gladius Taming. It's a really dirt cheap card. And if Gladius ever became a meta deck, this is the card you're going to want to have at 3. Only came out Shane Victories as a secret rare. Then we have Earthbound Immortals. Now, I'm not sure if you guys realize, no, no, it's not about me, but I'm a huge collector. I love collecting Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I've always done sporadically. I've always had my own personal binder, and if I didn't have my own another binder that was the old own personal binder, I always had like a deck box in which I sleep or even double sleep random cards. And the reason why, because I always liked Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I like the way some of them looked. I like the way some of them uh, maybe I played one time, or I just liked how they looked and uh, how they felt when they were ultimate rare and the highest rarity. Well, one of those cards was Earthbound Immortal. I own a playset of each Earthbound Immortal first edition ultimate rare, even when they first came out back in Raging Battle. I believe it was a Raging Battle or Stars Overdrive. I thought which one came out first. You also have Agent Prophecy, but I think I think it was Stars Overdrive actually over Raging Battle. Anyway, um, I always had these cards first edition ultimate rare. I just love the Earthbound Immortals. I love the way they looked. I love the storyline, and I love how Konami was taking an actual historical storyline, grabbing Earthbound Immortals, the gods of the Aztecs or Incas, or both, and just combining them in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I really wish Konami does this more. I really, really like that. I, I want to have more historical decks, or maybe like a Fire Fire deck, which would be something cool. I mean, we have a Fire deck, but like a deck that's themed with our realism, take and then add it with Konami's kind of, uh, you know, card game, and just, they twist a little bit, and they make it a thing. And that's what Earthbound's models are, and I really wish Konami did that more, because it was really fun. Anyone ever miss Sun and Moon Dragon Quintilla? Like, that's that's cool artwork on cards. Max Rarity, that was absolute trash on release, but still fun to play for casuals. Well, Earthbound models is also going up in value. <laughs> This all leads up to money, of course, as I do these market watches. Looking at Earthbound Immortal, um, the uh, Lightning Plate Unlimited version is about $25. Ka -ka 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 Apu is $25. With a $36, 30, I'm sorry, $35 market price. Uh, waiting for the internet to load. You got other Ultimate, Ultimate Models, Ultimate Rares, which I guarantee you are going to be following, by the way. Um, as far as the fa my favorite one, I'm going to say, ah, I forgot which one it was. Where is it? I think it was this guy. I, when I physically hold my guitar, it's either Uru or Kakarua. Uh, yeah, these cards are it's loading slow. I mean, you get the original Earthbound Immortals, they have the tin Earthbound Immortals, but I always like the Ultimate Rare Earthbound. Look, look, look how cool that card looked. Look at the Ultimate Rare, literally imprinted onto the card, pushing the artwork, uh, uh, pushing the, 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 the foils back of the stars and the attribute. I just I thought it was so insanely cool, and I really wish Konami did it more now, but had better card stock, because the card stock's definitely different. Anyway, um, looking over here in the market, it's sold out. Is that why it was loading? Because it was being bought out as I was clicking on? Anyway, uh, yeah, it's sold out for uh, Earthbound Immortals. And these are things you just can't get anymore. Konami's not going to reprint an Ultimate Rare set. They should. They'll make a crazy amount of money, but they're not going to do it. Moving forward, guys, um, OTS Swamp Pack 10. Look at the cards like Galatea, it's still holding about $73 price points, de definitely hovering between $70 and $75 still. Um, Dundran Colossus is barely holding on to $50 despite it having a $59 market price. Hayate is going down in value at about $32 market price, where the cards, I mean, $36 market price, where the card's current price point is at, at $32. And Super Rare is still in OTS Swamp Pack 10 to still hold value. Uh, Song Light Wolves is still roughly around five dollars, which is your entry in which you get an OTS Pack Ten. So if you get if you enter a tournament and you pull Sunlight Wolf, you pulled your entry back as a card of Yu Gi Oh, which is cool as hell. Then you got like Juzakuru, which is about three dollars, which should have been a Radiant. Orchestrated Babel, which is about three dollars, was great trade bait. Heat of the Fire Charm. By the way, it's great trade bait, but it's not gonna be great trade bait for long. Once once Orchis plays get one, that's all you need. Kiita, the Fire Trauma, is about three bucks. Batman Solar, still a good value card, about three dollars. It's just good value for, 
for this. Then you got Super Polymerization. Super Rare version came out on OTS Toronto Pack 9. Market price is about $10. The card's still about $10. The card had initial hype to like $20 and then hovered at $10. And that's where it currently is right now for Super Polymerization. $10. Crazy. And by the way, for OTS Toronto Pack 9, have fun finding those. You can't. Konami doesn't have any. They, they have none. The well is dry, my friends. So anyone that has OTS Toronto Pack 9 has value. Big value. Cards like Elemental Hero Strauss was now above its market price. And I know some of my friends got a little bit upset when I said about Elemental Hero Strauss because a lot of people I talked to were like, hey V, you know what I love? Elemental Hero Strauss. And then I mentioned they got really upset. And I want to apologize to you guys. But at the same time, this is what I do for the market. And this is very important that other people get involved. The reason I started doing these videos was to spread information so not one person could own the market on a, a, a card. Does it still happen? Of course. But I try to dilute that as much as possible. And hopefully my other content creators of uh, the Market Watch channels can also do this. Just to dilute the value of these cards. So cards won't hit uh, um, metamorphosis price points. We don't get them all, but we get a good amount of them. And one of them is definitely Emerald Hero Strauss. It's a card which is around, roughly around $35 higher than $30 market price. Shizuku's are 27s. A little under $20 market price. And then you got Lycoris. Another card is about $18. And out of all these, I'm going to guess Lycoris will be the highest selling one because you got Trickster's players wanting to play this. And maybe you've got some Orcus players kind of want to play this. So it kind of makes sense. And then once again, boom, right in the Super Rares. Super Poly being a $10 card. The next highest Super Rare in the set? Guys, you got Expedition. Dollar twenty. Actually, technically, Seca's Light, but yeah. I think Seca's Light is going to go up and higher in value of Super Rares as time goes on. Let me know what you guys think. Do you, are you are you anyone else out there hoarding Seca's Light Super Rares? Because that's the highest version. Unless we get a secret Seca's Light, um, which we should, um, I think Super Rare would be the highest version we currently have. And as time goes on and that card does not get reprinted, big buku money. Okay, uh, Harvey's Fell Duster. At this point, if you're playing a tournament pack, eight super rare harpies feathers. One, you're playing an illegal deck. But let's say it came off the ban list. Uh, two, you're playing an $800 card. Why? That makes no sense. Um, this card's market price currently roughly around $250. That's not the harpies feathers I want to talk about. These two are. Now, I want to quickly go over the harpies feathers for Legend for uh, Joey's World, which is $14, and we're seeing it roughly around $13 to $14 in the market price. You got the other cigarette from Yugi's World, which is kind of $15. Sure, Yugi's Harpy feathers, I get it. You guys love the show. You got the Battle Pack Dawn Star Force, which is $10. You got the Battle Pack Dawn Rare version, which is $10. Harpy's feathers doesn't know what it's doing because the price points are so sporadic. 38, 22, 26, 21, all over the place. My favorite Harpy's Felters are still, and I would love it if I put these in the Mega Tins, but it would dilute this price point. They did, though. You got to know that. Guy. That's going to be a thing. Is Prismatic Secret Harpy's Felters. And this is Prismatic Secret for anyone that doesn't know. This is exactly how it looks. It looks amazing. Harpy's Felters from the Stereo Destiny Duel promo versions are around $22 in the market price, but it's not that. The market price has actually cooled down. And we got one over here for about two over here for about fourteen dollars for Harpy's Felister. Then it just hovers around the fourteen dollar price point. This card's price originally was around eight dollars, went up to twelve dollars. The market price, because of the anticipation of the balance, drove it to its new market price. But now it's cooled down. And to be honest with you guys, once again, like I said in the beginning of this video, everyone's not focused on the ban list, they're focused on set release as well as Yu-Gi-Oh! events. So if you don't have a Harvey's Feathers or Prismatic Secret Rare, you might want to consider picking this up. But I'll wait until we get the full list of the Megatons, the Prismatic Megatons, making sure this isn't reprinted as a Prismatic Secret, because that would kind of kill the value. Even though I would still play this version, probably my favorite version of the card, just because that ra rarity is, once again, A, really hard to find, and B, a really nice looking rarity. Common question of the day comes from Tito. Tito says, I'm absolutely tired of dealing with local OTS store. The store has a bad habit of uh, to say, Tournaments start at 8 p.m. and don't start till 9 p.m. and on. I just want to pose you. Um, <clears throat> anyone watching this video that goes to my shop knows I do the same thing. I don't do it at 8 p.m. God, I, I, uh, no, it's absolutely terrible. I do it around like you know. I say I start at five and you know round one starts around six. It, it's it's just hard to do it with a store, especially you got guys calling want to play Yu-Gi-Oh. You don't want to say no to guys coming to play ca uh, cards. Um, if you guys go back to one of my earlier videos, I always talk about card shops and how. Uh, a car shop really is there just because it's like a bar for nerds. It's really that. And if a guy goes, hey man, I'm going to be a little bit late, but can I, can I come drink with you guys? You don't want to just say no, you know, be that guy. I, I always try to be as, as inclusive to all my places as possible. And um, as far as start late start time, no, but like that's I, I do the same thing. It's hard it's hard not to. So I understand that the OTS story, even though they shouldn't do it, I, I, I'm the same way. 
Um, I just wanted to really emphasize that. Um, the worst part is many people go to uh, go to play uh, because this OTS store has OTS packs. Once again, say, like I said in my other video, you, you, if I have OTS packs and nobody else does, hi, you got to deal with whatever horse should I have. Is it right? No. But if you, what are you going to do? Uh, call gets me, rat me out. Cool. You now have to drive two and a half hours. <laughs> so yeah, no, I, I totally understand this aspect as well. Not only the store, not only the store charges seven dollars for tournament entry, but it lags purposely to get the most amount of play participation. Once again, I, I totally get why it lags. Charging seven dollars is actually against Konami's policy. You're not supposed to charge seven dollars. Seven dollars as an OTS store. If you do, you must supplement the seven dollars with like a, I think it's like a star pack and an OTS pack. If they only give an OTS pack, they're actually going against Konami uh, rules against that. So yeah, you can't charge seven. You have to charge five. Unless you're in Canada, then 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 I think you can. Um, because their money's silly. Also, the store is filthy and it gives Konami a bad taste, a bad name. Besides an OTS store. Uh, I know I'm answering this like bit by bit. Um, keeping an OTS store clean is actually really hard to do. Not because, um, uh, once again, I'm, if you guys watch my videos, I'm spotless how I clean my OTS store. I really am compared to other stores. But uh, if you have a lot of plays in your store, it's kind of hard to clean the store constantly when people are acting like man childs and leaving soda and garbage all over the place. And I, I totally understand why um, you would say it's filthy. And, and once again, I hope they would clean it, obviously. But I get that the store is dirty. You got a lot of plays. People leave the crap everywhere. They, they, people eat food and just leave it hanging out and, and they walk out and the store smells like ass. Yeah, no, it's not. The, I don't think it's the OTS store for, for. I think it's the players for. Then again, if we're, if we're, if we're going to be honest and I'm biased as a fellow OTS store owner, I will like to say, I think it's both people's fault because the owner needs to correct the players. You see a, a player leave a can out, you need to go up to that guy and you gotta be the, you gotta be the bad guy. Hey, what's this can doing out here? Get that in the garbage. Uh, it, no, no, I don't wanna hear no crap. Put it in the garbage. And, and you have to make a scene as an OTS store owner. Do it. It's your store. It's your store. They're insulting you in your store by leaving a can out and walking away. And as small as that and silly as that little thing is, it does add up. Hey, whose garbage is uh, whose garbage is this? Oh, I, I don't know. Well, we don't know. Maybe next time I'll just go around a garbage bag and put, and change your diapers. And when, when you say things like that, mean things like that as OTS stoner, because they are mean. People get angry, get offended. But you know what they won't do? Leave that garbage out there. And I've said some mean things to people I really like and respect uh, in my store because my store is above everything. My store is main dojo, and all I am is a dumb headmaster, and I have a lot of ninjas. I don't know why I made this I made this into ninjas, but it just sounds really cool when I said it like that. But realistically, guys, I, I will act like a prick at times, and I know I'll do this 100%. I'll see, I know, I, and I hate doing it, but I will do it because my store being clean, my store, my place respecting my store is above everything else. And luckily for me, once again, uh, my players have been phenomenal in my store. But when they leave a mess every now and then, oh yeah, I'm a prick. I I jump on them. So as far as cleaning the store, I, I get why you're upset about it, but you have to understand the store, the store owner's perspective in which they have to clean after these babies, some of these people that are just pigs and don't know how to take garbage, don't don't in the garbage. Um, can I complain to Konami about this? And this is worth complaining about. No. no. No, I'm the wrong guy to talk to. I hate rats. I hate snitches. Work it out with the store, or go to another store. I, I I'm sorry. I I, I I will I will defend my fellow OTS store owners because it annoys me when when people rat. It annoys the crap out of me. And have I been ratted on be, uh, as an OTS store owner? Um, in the Magic community, I've been ratted on twice. And, for, and but, but wait, both times I didn't do anything wrong. They just rat me out. This is so it seems like you can play start to become rats. No 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 no. I don't know if I'm the only one in this, or I'm the if anyone agrees with me. But I, I don't like rats in my store. It annoys the crap out of me. Um, I'll kick up, I'll ban someone for any reason, by the way. I don't have any reason, and I'll ban them if they, I know they're a rat. I don't like rats in my store. Be cool with the owner. Uh, and then once again, the owner's, if the owner's trying, just go up to him, hey man, why don't you do this? Or talk with him. But don't ever rat your OTS store owner after Konami. And if Konami's watching this video, what are you gonna do? You can't do nothing. Like, yeah. <laughs> there's n there's nothing wrong with I what I just said. Just want to throw it out there. Um, will they do anything about it? Oh yeah, they'll ban you in two seconds. They'll ban you in two seconds. They'll get a warning and you're gone. And if they're really angry and they really want to, Konami, look look away. Go earmuffs. Um, they'll make something up to get you banned from Konami so you can't go to regionals, nationals, and Yu-Gi-Oh events. It sounds really mean, but they have the power to do that. 
Will they do that? Most likely not. But I just want to throw it out there because I've seen it happen one or two times in my years of playing this game. Realistically, they will ban you, and if any of your boys get upset, they'll ban them too. OTS stores are cold-blooded when it comes down to uh, uh, covering themselves from rats. Rats is the worst thing for to walk into an OTS store. It's just the worst because they now they have to do every single thing by the book because you, Captain Inspector, is over there going. Imagine driving with a cop all the time. That's what it is to have a store with a rat. Imagine uh, 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 anything you do and you just have a detective right behind you the whole time. That's a rat. And that's how it feels for us OTS store owners. And we'd rather just go, hey, you, out. Why would I do anything wrong? No, no, you did nothing wrong. But um, you're a rat and I don't like you here. And I ain't gonna lie, if someone's a rat and I know they're a rat in my store, I'm gonna call my other fellow OTS store owners and give them a heads up. And they'll do the same for me. And so, and they did the same for me. And that guy walked in the store. I kick him right out. I have no. I don't care. I want to buy ten boxes. Oh, that's fine. Go on eBay. I, I rather lose the money than deal with you, because you can get me in trouble for things that may or may not be right. That's all. I mean, I'm, I'm like I said. Ask any OTS store owner and show them this video. They'll agree with me a thousand percent. Um, okay. Um, what do you recommend, V? Because talking to the owner has not worked. Okay, that's horrible. <laughs> um, talking to the owner has not worked. I, I mean. <sighs> That's where it kind of changes. I think, once again, if, you, if you're a player, you want to go to the owner and have a conversation. The owner's just sitting there and he's not wanting to hear your crap. I, a, he's most likely a magic store owner. And B, he doesn't care about the Yu community. It's it's always one or the other or just both. 99% of the time, it's both. Um, to be honest with you, there's nothing you can do. Calling Konami will get you in trouble. Uh, you can call Konami. You can try. But, I mean, even anonymously. Uh, but I don't know. I don't, I don't like, you know, I don't like rats. Um, as far as some overcharging, yeah, you shouldn't, like, all this stuff is horrible, what's happening to you, Tito, 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 um, all this stuff is, ho is horrible, that's great, Papa, um, all this stuff is horrible, what's happening to you, it, it all is, it, it all, it, there's no other way, bro, I can say it, and I, I, I want to side with you, but riding out an OCS store is not the right way to do it, the right way to do it is finding somewhere else, now, I have a story, and I told it on my live stream, and I might do a video telling, telling about how I used to go to an OTS store at one, uh, one time, a long time ago, and I actually found another OTS store for players, and uh, maybe I'll tell that story. Maybe I'll do like a Yu-Gi-Oh! video in which I'll talk about my experience, about how I one time found another OTS store, or a store that was willing to be an OTS store, and how it backfired in my face. And as much as, and as bad as your OTS store is, it can always get worse. And maybe I'll explain that for you, Tito, because at one time I was in your shoes, exactly in your shoes. They weren't charging seven dollars, they were a bunch of pricks, and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll show that story on this channel, but um... Well, moving forward, guys, I really appreciate everyone watching my videos. Dito, I wish you the best of luck. Follow up and hit me up on Facebook. Uh, I rarely say this to anybody, but seriously, Dito, Dito, I got your name. Uh, hit me up on Facebook, and I would love to talk to you and figure out more out. And if I could and I could talk to that store owner, I would definitely have a conversation with that store owner. And I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Thank you so much. Please, make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Hit the like button. It's your boy, V, and you, Paisanos, have a great day. Oh, by the way, Dito, we'll figure out what's happening with you on the next episode of Dragon Ball V. See you later, Paisanos.